Good morning, Cherub Land. How is everybody doing? Fantastic, I hope. <laughs> you got a little bit of daylight savings time. I remember as a kid staying up 7 30, 8, 9, playing basketball and football outside. It was great. It's all changed. You got to do a lot more that you had more life to deal with. A lot more time to be able to enjoy your day. I'm sure you all are probably still celebrating while you all wait patiently. I am too. <laughs> it feels much different when we know we can yeah, be patient but still celebrate. This month, can you all guess what we're going to talk about? i give you a hint. No, not two. Not even victory. Peace. Peace is defined just like this. Proving you care more about each other than winning an argument. Peace. Proving you care more about each other than winning an argument. I emphasize proving because if you ever had to prove something, you either had to show somebody some evidence or even you had to go get somebody else that saw it too. You, you had to get a witness. Yeah. Well, how do we know we have peace? Where does peace come from? All those are great questions that we have to ask us ourselves. Is peace on the outside or is peace on the inside? I always kind of like looking at situations on the other side. What's the opposite of peace? War. Yeah. Confusion. Anger. Even doubt and fear. Do you ever have any of those thoughts? Do you ever have any of those emotions? We all have at some point in time about something or another. We've all been angry because we couldn't spend the night. We've all had doubt that somebody was actually going to do what they said they were going to do. We've all had fear that the bullet was going to mess with us today or that we wouldn't get the right answer on our test. Or even the fear that our parents was going to whoop us for something we did wrong. <laughs> they should. We've all had our own concerns. And it caused us to not have peace in our minds. <sighs> Things we've done. <sighs> I, I don't want nobody to... Don't... That's, that's not yours. All these things. It shows that we really don't have peace. And this goes on and on. Does God want us to be that way? No, not at all. He's not giving us a spirit of fear but a power and a love and of a sound mind. Peace. Let me help you all a little bit more. Let's look at our memory verse. We've got to. Right finger there. <laughs> Echo buttons on. So let us do all we can to live in peace. And let us work hard to build up one another. Romans 14, 
verse 19. So let us do all we can to live in peace. And let us work hard to build up one another. Romans 14, verse 19. Echo buttons off. All says all. You know how they say you're going to do all you can or be all you can be? Or, or is that all the ice cream? <laughs> it means that you can scrape around the edges you still can't find it. Can we scrape around the edges of our life and make sure we've done all we could to live in peace with someone else? You know the edges. I, I, I don't want to. But did this to me. Or I, I don't really like it because she likes her. Or he did that to my cousin. Or he knocked over my books. All we can to live in peace with one another. All makes us look where? Right here. No further than our own selves. So we have no excuse. I didn't know, I didn't have, but I didn't have. We all gotta look within our own selves. That we can do all we can do to live in peace. For one another. And also, do all we can to what? You don't want to know. Everybody gets down. I don't care who you are. But what are you saying to them? Are we picking them up? Are, are we telling them it'll be okay? Or, or are we telling them just a lie to make them feel good? Sometimes we have to hear the truth. It takes a real friend to tell someone else, hey, man, you shouldn't have done that, man. That person wasn't doing nothing to you. Why did you leave them? Why don't you just leave them alone? Yeah. It takes that. Yeah, that's building somebody else up. By telling them, you're better than that. You don't need to do that. Or, or leave her alone. She's not even bothering you. I, I like her dress. Yeah, that's building somebody up. Building somebody up don't always mean you're telling them something good. It means telling them the truth. Yeah. Tell them that they're better than that. So all month long, we're going to talk about peace. But this week, we got to figure out where did this peace come from? Because we didn't have it. If we had it, we wouldn't have no need to get it from God. We would have our own little righteousness. But we know that's not the truth. We don't have peace. The only peace that we have comes from who? comes from the Almighty, the everlasting Father, the creator of the ends of the earth. So we don't have to worry about, our peace just working in Birmingham and it doesn't work in Huntsville. It works everywhere. It even works in San Francisco, San Diego, Miami. A peace works in Lagos, Nigeria. <laughs> it works everywhere. It's the creator of the entire world. It even works in our own classroom. It works in second period, third period, fourth period, even in PE. That's what I want you all to see. It works wherever you go. He is the God of peace. But if y'all got a minute, 
I would love to share with you all how we actually were able to get peace. I, I know y'all have patience. See y'all in just a little bit. Glad you all had patience and was able to make it back. Well, how do we know that we can have peace? Well, where do we get this peace from? God made peace with us first. We got to really go back way, way, way back in time, like Mr. Victor says. And we've got to look at how it all started. You remember the big story? Yeah. And going back, there was Adam and Eve. God created man and woman and created them in his garden. Created them from the dust and told them they could have all they wanted. Just don't eat from the fruit of this tree. Well, they were disobedient. They did what they knew they shouldn't do. And God had to punish them. In doing so, it created a separation between man and God. Because we see and been doing it ever since. Oh, thank God for peace. Well, peace brings us back to a right relationship with God. But I don't want to get ahead of myself. Adam and Eve was put out the garden. Well, God made a promise. He already knew. You know, he knows the ending of something even before it starts. So what happened, God had already put things into motion and told the serpent. Exactly. But what happened? So, fast forward, people became disobedient and more and more and more and more disobedient. So much so God said he was going to destroy almost all of mankind. And he told Noah and had him and his family and also all animals coming and all. It sent a flood. After the flood was over, we saw a rainbow. And God made another promise. He won't never destroy the earth by water again. Well, what do we do? We were good then. Nothing ever bad happened. We don't believe that. We still continue to do wrong because sin was there and we weren't willing to fight hard enough to not do it. Just as us being told don't do this and we find our way to do it. How did our parents say just won't do what we're asked to do. <laughs> but in the story, God finds a man named Abel and he makes a promise to Abel. He tells him, come away from all those people, your family, and I'll make you a great nation. So great, your descendants will be like the stars of the sky. Or like the sands of the seashore. And he made also that promise that, hey, the Savior will come from your generation, from your descendants. Guess what else happened? <laughs> Those Israelites. Those, those Hebrews, God's people, they were enslaved by the Egyptians. And God allowed Moses to be something that really helped them. 
deliver them. To give them what? Peace. From all that free labor. <laughs> Slavery. So, by those plagues and God's almighty power, they were delivered. They walked across the Red Sea on dry land. Wow. That gives us hope that we can have peace even just by that. But fast forward. Guess what else happened? Jesus Christ was born. The same. The, the Prince of Peace. Yeah. The one that was able to do what? Show us how we should live peaceably with our brothers and sisters. No need to just have peace within our own self. We have to do all we can yeah, with others, and then build each other up. But guess what else? That right standing, that peace that we have to have with God, he became the ultimate sacrifice. As it's written, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believed in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So Jesus Christ had to die for the sins of the world. And many they are. Not just the sins from back then, but also the ones for today. Whosoever believed will be saved. But that's not all. Because him dying, yes, it gave us peace with God. But guess what? He wants us to have peace inside as well. Yeah. And how did that happen? I, I got a letter from John. Uh, Y'all want just listen to it. Here he is right here. Week while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter... And the other disciple started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked in at the strips of linen lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter came along behind him and went straight into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the cloth that had been wrapped around Jesus' head. The cloth was still lying in its place, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple who had reached the tomb first also went inside. He saw and believed. They still did not understand from scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to where they were staying. Now Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realize that it was Jesus. He asked her, Woman, why are you crying? Who is it you are looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary, she turned toward him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said, do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. 
Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my father and your father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. On the evening of that first day of the week when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and sighed. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again Jesus said, Peace be with you. Wow. That seemed like a lot. Well, guess what? It was. But know this. We have peace through a resurrected Jesus Christ. A resurrected Lord. We have peace in here and in here. What we're willing to do in our hearts and also in our minds, knowing that we have salvation in him. I've got one more verse, if you just don't mind. It's Colossians chapter 1, verse 20. God was pleased to bring all things back to himself. That's because of what Christ has done. These things include everything on earth and in heaven. God made peace through Christ's blood by his death on the cross. That's Colossians chapter 1, verse 20. Between Colossians chapter 1, verse 20, and John chapter 20, verse 1 all the way to 20, wow, we can see God made peace with us. <laughs> what a, a great example. Not that we deserved it, because we had no reason to have it. We clearly done wrong intentionally over and over, over and over again. Not even caring sometimes about the consequences. But God made peace with them back then, us today, and those that will come tomorrow through his son, Jesus Christ. It's a great example for us. <laughs> we have no need to keep looking any further at what somebody, what she, what he. We have all the resources and ability to do what? Make peace with them. Do all we can. I encourage you all. Have peace inside. Do all you can. And have peace with others. And make sure we lift each other up. Peace.